All right, it's that time. Let's talk about batteries. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about hybrid batteries, hybrid car batteries. I usually stay away from hybrid car batteries. And the reason is, it's because hybrid cars have really small batteries that require a lot of power out of them, right? So for tiny battery to give you all those energy really quickly, uh, that means that you're cycling that maybe, you know, even going down to the grocery store, right? And so at the end of their life, they're pretty beat up. As opposed to, you know, full electric car batteries, those are massive, huge batteries. And it, you know, you, you, you have to try really hard to cycle it once a day. But on hybrids, you, you could put cycles on that battery because it's really small, right? And it really hard cycles. And so hybrid batteries look like this, not that energy dense. So this one, for example, comes in at around 100 watt hours a kilogram. And so that is uh, like less than half of what like a Tesla battery pack is, for example, right? But it, they're usually rated around 10C to 20C, right? So 20 times their capacity, they're able to put out that much power. And so even though traditionally I've been staying away from them because, well, they're usually really beat up and they're just not worth that much. On this one here, it's not your typical hybrid battery. Well, it, it is a hybrid battery in every sense of the spec, right? So they're about the same size as these, about the same uh, width and same capacity, 25 amp hours. The only difference on this module, for example, is that it doesn't have studs. And so th this is a module that's come already put together, laser weld into 12S. And the reason why I'm looking into this module is because this doesn't come from a traditional uh, hybrid car, right? So this comes from a car that was a hydrogen vehicle. And if you know anything about hydrogen vehicles, it's uh, the, what it means is it's an electric car, but instead of getting their energy from a battery, it gets it from a fuel cell. It's a, it's a device that creates hydrogen into electricity. And so it uses, it has a battery that is converting hydrogen into electrons on demand. And so they don't need a battery, right? But what this manufacturer did is in order to capture the regenerative braking, right, then they need a small onboard battery to capture that because the hydrogen battery just creates electricity on demand. It just converts energy into it from hydrogen into electricity, but it can't store, right? It can't go back and, you know, create electrons into hydrogen again, uh, even though there is a way to do that, but they, they don't, right? So the easier way to do it is um, to store it in a small local battery. And so that's what this battery is for. And so this battery, even though it has the same specs as the, the, the typical hybrid car, it wasn't used in a typical configuration. This battery would just store the energy that was created by braking and then it would let it go and then they would uh, give it back when the car needed it, right? Along with the hydrogen fuel cell. And so as a result of that, these are not beat up and they're not so, so super degraded, right? I'm testing them here. And this is a whole fleet of cars that was decommissioned. And now they're in pretty good shape. They're only a couple years old, I think. And, uh, well, they're not beat up. And so I'm like, okay, let's find a, a, an application for these, right? Uh, that we can use them. And so I'm changing them. Nobody needs a 12S. That's like a 44.4 uh, volts nominal, right? So they're too low for 48 volt applications but too high for everything else that's out there. So uh, I think the car audio, uh, the uh, automotive audio world uh, is using these types of batteries in 4S. And so four divides into 12, three times. So I'm trying to do that, maybe modify these modules into four sections of 4S. And then that becomes a 16 volt nominal, right? Which can be used in a 12 volt uh, scenario uh, for cars. And in that case, these are rated around, I think it's a 10 C battery uh, and even higher once if you use the, the cooling, but without cooling, I think it's a legit 10 C. So these cells can put out 200 amps, right? So this module right here should be able to do 200 amps. Uh, if I parallel three of these little modules in 4S, then you're talking about 600 amps. And that project's underway. I'm you know, uh, I'm doing those experiments. But today what I want to show you is this module. Uh, and I want to test it 
and show you just how hot it gets loading it with i don't know like 150 amps i think that's all i can muster here with my loads these are grid tie inverters these don't care that these are not exactly 48 volts 44 volts they don't care these are you know they they have a wide range of voltage coming in so that's why i like to use them so i have five of them here and i think each one can do about 25 to 30 amps so we shall see how much we can load that right uh, and then we'll measure that and then we'll see the thermal camera to see that these, these batteries is going to be like, you know, having a field day. Like it's, it's like, you know, easy walk in the park for it. Uh, because again, they could do, I think 200 amps. All right. So here we go. I've connected these three, uh, inverters here. And the first one is already online, 900 Watts. So 25 amps. Uh, the second, the two second ones are about to come into here this one there we go another 25 and 900 amps so that's 50 now the center one is taking a little while there we go 150 there we go so 75 amps in there now let's connect those other two okay so those two over there are connected now 80 90 100 and 25 28 30 oh my god these cables are gonna get hot <laughs> it's still cool there we go so 135 134 uh watts into this battery let me put the thermal camera to see okay so there we go the cables those cables are gonna get i mean they're still cold but they're, they're warming up Meanwhile, the battery, it's cold. Very, very cold. Let's leave it there until it shuts down. Then we should be able to see. amp continuous right so let's look at the cells so here we go so they're at 41 C this is uh, this is not hot at all which is when one cycle at 140 amps so 200 amps we'll probably get the cells somewhere around uh, maybe 50 C 300 amps maybe would get it down to like 70 so yeah I, i'd say these without cooling definitely 200 amp continues no problem 300 amp maybe you'll get there close to the to the, the temperature capacity of these guys right with cooling if you put a cooling plate on that bottom side you can get 400 amp continues out of these no problem these are definitely 10 maybe even 20 c cells and so they're pretty cool all right so these are great they are testing 100 percent of their capacity right uh and so what can you use these for let's talk about that all right so as you saw uh there are certain equipment that doesn't care that these are not exactly 44 or the standard 44 uh, 48 volt in a standard right and so grid tie inverters for example there i know that someone it was making a 44 volt inverter for Tesla packs because Tesla two modules from the Tesla Model S would be 12S and would be the same voltage as this. So I'm gonna look into that. I think someone already designed is already marketing uh, a big inverter, like a six kilowatt inverter, the split phase that you can run your entire house off of these, right? So if that uh, is available, then you could easily just get, you know, 10 of these or 20 of these and then just parallel them, right? Just parallel them, positive to positive to positive to and then negative, negative and then connect that into your inverter. You can charge these, right? Off of solar, you could charge these off of, uh, you know, uh, off-peak 
energy like at night when it's cheap and then you can use these during the day so you can shift your load from when it's expensive you know when it's cheap to when it's expensive stuff uh and then you can do that even with this cheap uh grid tie inverters that i use i had five of them here so that's five kilowatt and those are cheap those are like a hundred dollars on amazon right so they work with these right so um all you have to do is just charge it now of course uh you'd have to use a bms on these because these are nmc uh lithium batteries right and so these are not the super ultra safe lithium iron phosphate right and so that's the reason why you can get these and these i think we're pricing them like kind of cheap like 120 dollars each is one over one kilowatt hour uh battery in here so it's just about a, a little bit over a hundred dollars a kilowatt hour that's one third of what you can get uh lithium iron phosphate right and they're here in the states and they are plentiful uh and you would just have to figure out well i mean if you get the raw cells the lithium iron phosphate you have, still have to figure out the bms so these are no different when it comes to that uh cycle life might be the only thing we don't know what the cycle life of these are but since these are designed for 10c 20c uh use if you use them at like 1C or 2C or whatever, I mean, oh, go crazy. Charge them at 5C. That's in 20 minutes, by the way. That's a, that's a 5C charge would be in 20 minutes. Discharge them at 20C. That's also 20 minutes, right? Discharge. Uh, go hard on them. You might get two, 3,000 cycles off of these because these are made to cycle like crazy on a hybrid car, right? Now, uh, the reason why these are not beat up is because they weren't using a hybrid car or a typical hybrid car like i explained at the beginning of this video and so that i think these are very compelling so they're going to be at jack35.com uh stay tuned if you are into audio uh competition audio stuff like and you need a 12 volt battery right uh these guys are using uh nmc based batteries uh at 4s so that means they're 16 volts and i'm going to develop this one right here put a big bus bar in here that is, needs to be able to carry at least 500 600 amps right so that uh these could turn into very very cheap batteries for for that market right but as of right now they're available like this on modified uh we got hundreds of these and we can get more and more and so yeah if you guys are interested in this just go to jack35.com so there you go another day another battery uh hopefully that's useful for a lot of you guys out there uh thanks for watching these videos we'll see you guys on the next one bye